So thanks for joining us and uh, we will get started. So this night is dedicated to our first and second grade parents. And we have a whole host of people here to tell you a little bit more about your child's program for the year. Uh, and thanks for taking the time to join us. Uh, we've been, I know I've been thinking very long and hard about how to help our parents, you all, uh, to feel connected to their child's experience this year. Um, we are so very grateful and appreciative that we have your kids here every day learning with us together. And at the same time, we feel a bit less connected to parents. Um, and, and as, which is why we want to host these types of opportunities um, to be able to get, give you an opportunity to feel a little more connected to the Carol program and to your child's experience. So one way um, we're going to do that is we're going to spend the evening. We're going to spend about an hour, and we're going to run through all the different components of your child's day and give you a chance uh, to ask some questions um, at the end of the presentation. So our goal tonight is to help you to feel in the know about your child's first and second grade experience thus far and what's been planned for the future. We have a team of folks from Carol here with you tonight to try to accomplish these goals. Let me tell you who these, these folks are. So we have Glenn Coleman here, who's our assistant lower school division head, to share with you the bigger picture of how your child's day is organized and um, where we focus from a wide angle lens. Um, we have our team leader, Carol Spooner, and for some of you, uh, your classroom teacher, here to share the ethos of the first and second grade experience. We have Maley Perilla, one of our counselors, to share with you how we support your children from a social emotional perspective. And we have our academic leadership um, in language arts, who is Aaron Puck, in math, who is Peter Morris, and in the focus area tutorial, who is Portia Pierre Mike, to dig more into their specific areas of focus. So one takeaway that I'm really hopeful that you get from attending to this evening is that there are a lot of eyes on your children. These folks who you're hearing from tonight are all actively aware of how your child is doing socially, emotionally, and academically in very discreet ways. They've been planning for your child's arrival before they arrived. Uh, all summer long, getting ready um, for your children to arrive in the door, uh, set up for as much success as we can possibly provide with all the information, using all the information you have given us um, in the admissions process. So you all have homeroom teachers who you now have met and gotten to know to some degree, and they are will always be your first point of contact with any questions or comments or concerns, and they are supported by all of these people in problem solving, resourcing, training, and getting your children. So my big point for, for the evening is, is an indication of this large village of educators all with eyes on your children. So as I think about the big picture as the lower school community, uh, let me share just a little information about where we're sitting this year. Um, I wanted to share with you that we have 160 students in the lower school this year. And our first and second grade has 18 students in three classrooms. You, um, and you hear us refer to our youngest group of students as the BR2s. You've probably heard that before. Um, and there are times where we haven't been that explicit about what that actually means. So here we go, a quick explanation of what that is. So about 15 years ago, we began our program for our first graders. And often many, um, many years, in many of our years, our group of first and second graders were one cohort with blended classrooms of first and second graders, and we called them the beginning readers, the BRs, we called them. Um, and this term is stuck as an internal reference for us now since that time. Um, so that the BR2s are, are just what you expect them to be, our first and second graders. And we consider them a cohort of 18 children. Um, we also have uh, families this year coming from a real wide array of towns. Um, we reference about 95 towns as a whole school uh, that the Carroll School represents. Typically that number has been closer to 75. So this number is really diversifying as far as our catchment area and how far and wide people come for Carroll. Um, 
And, the, and speaking of diversity, in, in addition to our steadfast commitment to serving children with language-based learning dif, uh, disabilities, we remain very committed to our work in diversity, equity, and inclusion. And in that effort, we, are, we have ongoing trainings and DEI-themed professional learning communities with our faculty um, on a regular basis. We just came from one this past Friday. Um, where we really dug into the different terminology for all of us to have a better affinity for. Um, we have dedicated teachers who are now considered DEI specialists at every grade level and at the first um, and second grade level we have a DEI specialist as one of the teachers um, who is directly supporting this commitment. Um, and this year, in addition, we have taken on the concept of perspective taking as a theme for our whole community. So more to come as the year progresses on that front. Um, so overall, what have we been up to in the month of September? We've gotten to know your kids and they've gotten to know either their new school or their new grade. We've dedicated time for setting up routines and grade and school culture. We've been building connections to kids to kids and adult to kids, and we've done informal and formal assessments used as baselines as, as helps us to inform our instruction moving forward and our um, progress monitoring. All a very purposeful, intentional, slow start to build a foundation of social emotional readiness for learning. And we are now off to a great start and are ready to go. So let's get the evening started. Um, I want to let you know that we are recording this presentation so that we can have it as a reference for you in the future or if you want to look at it another time or those who weren't able to join us are able to look at it. If you have questions as information is being presented, please post them in, in the chat and we'll dedicate some time at the end of the presentation to get your questions answered. And uh, so let's get started. And I'm going to pass the mic to Carol Spooner, our BR2 team leader. Take it away, Carol. Carol, is your microphone on? No, I've forgotten how to do this apparently. <laughs> Let's try that again. <laughs> all right. Um, welcome everybody. So glad you could join all of us uh, today, uh, tonight, taking your time out of your evening. Um, so like Sue said, I'm the BR2 team leader. Uh, just a few fun facts about me are I am a former Carol parent. I have a son who came to Carol from sixth through eighth grade. He is all grown up and has uh, is off the payroll. So, and a lot of it is because of Carol School. Um, and I also love to sew and go to Maine uh, when I'm not at school. You can go to the next slide. And these are my two uh, teammates on the BR2 team, Ellen Cook. Uh, Ellen Cook loves playing paddle. And Sarah Garino, is, she loves playing softball and loves cats. This year, we have a dedicated team time. We meet two blocks per week as a whole team. So all 18 kids and... Um, all the teachers and we our focus right now and a lot during the school year is working on eric our core principles of empathy respect inclusion and kindness um we just came up with a kindness statement so every grade gets a letter our grade is the k in eric for kindness and we just came up with a great um statement all together as a group that will be part of the Carroll School contract that we will all sign. And now we are on to making kindness fish. And we read this book, Only One You. Um, so we're, you know, just in the beginning stages of building a community with all 18 and all three teachers. And um, it's really a great time to for all of us to get to know each other. And go to the next one here. Oops. <laughs> yep. So we use responsive classroom as a tool to help um, frame the year. 
there is a lot of routines that we go over. One of those routines is uh, just, you know, coming to school, arriving to school, taking care of your backpack. And then we also have morning meeting. So the morning meeting is structured with a greeting. We all say good morning to each other, um, usually in some fun way that um, keeps the kids moving. Then we have a share. So they, for example, they might share my favorite color or some something else that they enjoy. Uh, and then we do an activity. So this is a chance during the morning meeting to get them moving up and around and doing a fun activity all together. And then we end by reading our message. So this is just an example of one of my messages from last year. So there's a question on the message with they, which they need to respond to. So in this case, it was, what is your favorite type of donut? Which, you know, is important information. Um, and then we also all use the same um, type of language. So you will often hear us saying, show me what blank looks like, or I wonder, um, to really get them thinking about different things. We also work a lot on executive functioning skills. We go over the schedule for the day every morning. All three of us have a similar chart hanging in our classrooms that holds the schedule cards. And the kids really are into, you know, checking things kind of as we go through the day. Um, there's a, we use this clock and the way the clock works is we shade the area of time that the kids have to do a certain task and they can see the hand move from where the time starts. So in the example on the screen, it would start at seven and they would have five minutes to do this task. So they would know when the minute hand gets to eight that their time is up and it's a way to get them to work on some time management skills with a visual. And then we also have them make plans when they're doing a project. So this is an example of our fish project. They had to draw their rock that they're going to paint for their kindness rock. They're all gonna be painted like fish. And so they traced the rock since they're all different. And then they planned out what, they're, what they wanted their fish to look like. Go to the next slide here. So we all have reading logs. Um, as you can see, we all have a different one, but same purpose for um, all of them. Um, and so the kids bring it back and forth in their blue folders. This happens to be my blue folder. Um, and then they get, you know, the teachers check it every day and then we send it back home um, to be filled out the next evening. Um, so the reading log is really just to promote that reading is enjoyable and we want them to like it and we want them to be reading things that they might not necessarily be able to decode but they might be able to comprehend so chapter books are great uh, sometimes books will come home that are decodable books and they can use those to, uh, to count as their reading log as well Recess and Bounders clothing. So at Carroll School, we are fans of getting outside. And so if it's raining, like today, even if it's sprinkling, we go outside. The only time we don't go outside in the rain is if it's downpouring. Um, and then in the snow, same thing. I mean, let's be honest, snow is more exciting than rain. Um, but to play in the snow on our playground, they do need to have all of the pictured gear in order to play in the snow. Um, kids are usually really good about remembering this because they're very motivated by playing in the snow. Um, but just so all of you know, we do need all of those things um, just so that they don't, you know, get soaking wet. You're more than welcome to also send in a pair of extra snow pants if the snow happens to be really wet because they do get soaked. And then birthdays. So we all do some form of birthday card that all the kids sign for each other to celebrate birthdays. 
And we also welcome you to send in a little non-edible treat like pencils or um, a fidget or something of that nature to help celebrate their birthday. So it's not a requirement, but you're welcome to do so if you would like. Um, and now I'm going to pass it off to Maylee Perilla, our counselor. Hi everybody, my name is um, Maylee Perilla and I'm the counselor for um, BR2, 3 and part of 4th grade, which um, I split with my co-counselor, Megan Shea. Um, so I just wanna share a little bit about our role. We support a lot of social emotional learning in classrooms. So um, I try to push into your child's classroom as much as possible. Um, just to kind of see them in action and also support the social emotional learning that's happening kind of in every part of their day. Um, we also do things like have check-ins with students to help support um, using strategies and have problem solving um, conferences with students. Um, we also spend a lot of time helping to build our Carol community. So we, Meg and I teach classes called community building. Um, for the BR2s, we're going to focus mostly this year on um, understanding our feelings, working on strategies to manage big feelings, um, just so that, you know, when big feelings come up in our day, we know how to handle that and still be, you know, in a good learning place and be able to be at school. Um, other parts of our job include um, supporting the Carroll community. So we have a Helping Hands Community Service Club. Um, and we also encourage participation in our talent show, which is always a big hit. This year it will be remote, so we want to see all the talents from your kids. Um, but just in general, we're always happy to collaborate, always happy to get in touch um, and just connect about how best to we can support your, your child at school um, in any way that we can. That's what we're here for. So. Um, it's so nice to be here with you all. Thank you. And I'm going to introduce um, our assistant division head, Glenn Coleman. Thanks, Maylee. Um, welcome, everybody. Thanks for being here tonight. Um, so my job tonight is to kind of um, pull back out from the details of what Carol was talking about in terms of the BR2 experience, daily experience, and talk more broadly uh, about the academic program. So I'm gonna give you sort of a, a big picture view. And then after I speak, we're gonna have a couple of, a few of our department heads go into a little bit more detail of the, their domains. Um, so can you move it ahead, Erin, please? Thank you. So when I think about the academic program, I like to sort of think about it in three broad categories. Um, we have parts of our day that are directly connected to structured learning and remediation. We have parts of our day where we're really working on building our cognitive capacities and those thinking skills. And that includes some of the executive functioning that Carol was referring to before. And then we also dedicate a part of our day to fostering strengths and embracing individualities. And that, that includes the DEI work that was mentioned before, as well as some of our multis, um, our multi-choices, which you're going to hear about at the end of this presentation. So, um, Aram, if you can go to the next slide. Uh, so what I want to show you here is when you think about those three parts of the, of the day, um, I want to show you through graphics exactly where things happen. So this is a typical, this happens to be one of the students in Carol's class. And this is what um, their schedule looks like. So you can see in the green there that a, a lot of our day is dedicated to structured learning and remediation. And so those areas include our language classes and our focus areas or tutorials and our math classes and also our flex block. Um, so our flex block is something that happens every day, Monday through Thursday, and the children are divided into much smaller groups. So it's it's about four to one, sometimes a little smaller. And we this is a time period that we really sort of hone in on what kids need and give them some 
extra uh, an extra dose of something that they might be working on and often it's in the language domain so a lot of the um, second graders in particular are working with a program called RAVO which is a program de dedicated to automaticity and fluency in reading uh, and there's also some cognitive work that goes into that period as well and that's where we're kind of getting at some of the foundational weaknesses such as working memory processing speed, visual thinking, logical reasoning. Those are things that we might work on in that period. So the um, flex block really sort of breaks back down into a four to one period where it's really specifically tailored to uh, the needs of the kids in that particular group. Aaron, if you can go to the next one. Um, and so, you know, we just talked a little bit about building those cognitive capacities in the flex block. Uh, which is certainly a place that we do it. But really, cognitive capacities and executive function skills are built into our instruction in general. So the kids throughout their day are constantly being um, exposed to systems and strategies that work for them in terms of their learning. And I know Aaron will talk a little bit more about some of those systems. But um, I just wanted to sort of zero in on two parts of the day where some of this work is specifically done. So you'll notice that there are there's a lot of yellow there at the beginning and the end of the day. So we have um, an extended after the morning meeting, we have an extended period where that we call advisory, where kids are working on developing specific executive functioning or social emotional skills. So that um, our A block doesn't start until 850. So we use that time in the morning right after morning meeting to start um, working directly on those skills. And then likewise, at the end of the day, we have something called NCLU, which stands for No Child Left Unorganized. Um, and this is the time of day that we kind of wrap up everything. We reflect on what's happened during the day. We celebrate successes. Um, it's done in, in a closing uh, closing meeting or closing circle format. And uh, it's, it's a nice way to kind of use these two periods to start and end the day and really put some structure into their experience. Thanks, Sam. Can you go to the next one? So um, the other, the last part I want to talk about is that um, we really do like to celebrate uh, children's strengths. And um, I'm not sure how many of you have read the book, The Dyslexic Advantage, but our children are chock full of strengths and their minds are developed in ways that um, really lend themselves to some pretty special things. So we find it's important to really try to capitalize on that. Um, so we do so at different times of the day. You've heard about team time. We mentioned morning meeting. Um, you're going to hear a little bit more about multis at the end. But I also want to mention that on Fridays, or I should say every other Friday, um, the children have an opportunity to participate in an enrichment experience that is non-academic generally um, and taught by our multis teachers. So you'll see that on your child's schedule every other Friday. Um, and then you'll hear a little bit more about this in, at the end of the presentation when we show uh, our multis video. So I'm going to turn it over right now to our first department head who's going to talk a little bit more in detail about the language program. So I'd like to introduce Aram Huck to everybody. Thank you, Glenn. Uh, hi everyone, I am Aram Haq, I'm Head of Language in the Lower School, and um, thank you again for joining us today. And uh, thinking about my role and my responsibilities, one of the things I do over the summer is group our students uh, into their language classes. So knowing that, um, and, and this work is really done by really understanding and really an, uh, analyzing our students' cognitive learning profiles in depth, as well as their academic skills. So for the first, first grade or the BRs, we have one section. So that was not very complex. But for our second graders, there are two sections. And um, the pace of instruction and focus in the curriculum is uh, designed to meet the students where they are. And our primary goal in these younger grades uh, really is to build a very strong foundation for all future academic learning. So 
if you look at the slide and there's an image of a brain and knowing that all uh, learning happens you know as in response to the visual auditory or the kinesthetic input that comes into the brain for our youngest students at the lower school um, the multi-sensory and the tactile piece is the most critical for their conceptual understanding, their retention, and their retrieval. So hence the picture, the image of the multi-sensory piece, the kinesthetic piece is a little bit bigger. Um, because I think in all the uh, curriculum with Carol, with Ellen, and with Sarah, one of the primary goals that we have is that we keep everything really hands-on and multi-sensory for our youngest students. In terms of um, the language program, um, there is a big focus on oral language development. And uh, we want our students to develop the oral language skills so they can use it effectively for communication and also to make sense of the world around them. Um, they will, students in BR in the second grade uh, work heavily on concepts such as foundational concepts, such as categorizing objects by attributes, they work on vocabulary, they work on uh, retelling stories and sequencing details in the stories in the correct order. They work on all of these different skills to develop, develop their oral language skills, which in later grades, as we know, is a precursor to writing. So oral language is a huge focus in the beginning readers as well as the second grade program. For logical awareness, decoding, spelling, along with the OG tutorial, uh, there's a significant amount of time in these younger grades that is dedicated to these skills. Um, we meet our students where they are. And as um, Glenn's mentioned that in the flex block, we have an intervention called REVO, which uh, is an acronym for reading with automaticity, working on vocabulary, engaging with language, and orthography, which is really the orthographic mapping, which is the spelling code, basically. So this intervention really encourages students in this uh, younger grades to start looking at words and gluing some sounds together based on rhyme patterns so they can read words not sound by sound by start lifting them in chunks. So they can start decoding more fluently and work on the fluency at the word level. So that's an intervention that happens in the flex block, but that's a huge piece of um, our work on the reading piece. Um, comprehension work is directly and explicitly done in the first grade as well as in second. And it begins well before their reading skills develop, but we want our students to uh, listen to uh, complex and uh, interesting story plots, fiction stories, and be able to tease them apart and break them up into elements and work with it. So they need to not only work on their expressive language organization, which we use this EET tool for that you see in the picture, it's a string of beads. So for the BR and the second graders, our goal is to work on the first three beads. Uh, first one being the categorizing, the second one being more like you know what the verb or what the action is and then um, what it looks like would be the third beat so these three beats in this eet tool help with the expressive piece but then with our comprehension uh, curriculum we want them to work on their receptive and listening comprehension um, and really be able to have those strategies to kind of work with information that is coming their way so all this work between expressive and receptive language is happening along with developing the reading uh, skills as well. Uh, handwriting is another huge focus in the BR and the second grade program, language program. Um, we will start the journey of handwriting uh, by meeting with our kids where they are. If the need is, then we'll start at the gross motor and then work towards the fine motor. Or if the handwriting is in a good place, then we'll continue to work on it. Not at the occupational therapy level, but we do work on, we encourage our kids to have a good posture, uh, thing, pencil grip, uh, paper placement, and all of those things are a focus. And then uh, we have direct instruction on uh, letter and number formation and orientation and size, etc. So there is a uh, lots of hands-on parts of handwriting instruction that might be something we go to first if the need is there, or we may get, stick with the visual and the multi-sensory 
um, uh, practice and direct, uh, instruction on the letter and number formation. Grammar is, again, uh, we work on the foundations of a sentence structure, which is really nouns and verbs. So students in first grade and in second grade really work heavily on understanding these two concepts. What role do they play in putting a sentence together? And it is really the building blocks of a grammatically correct sentence, complex sentence that they might work on in later grades. So that's definitely a big goal in first grade and in second grade to have a you know, good level of indep independence and understanding of what nouns are, proper nouns, common nouns, as well as verbs. And then beyond that, we push them as far as we can go. And students will learn about adjectives also in this grade level, uh, depending on where how they're responding to the learning. Uh, in terms of assessments, um, there are very customized assessments for the first graders, which really are in response to their learning in decoding, spelling, phonological awareness, and uh, for handwriting uh, as well. And for second graders, they align with what the OG, which uh, Portia is going to speak to in a bit, but the Orton Gillingham curriculum, uh, we have curriculum based assessments for that curriculum three times a year. And all second graders take those assessments with their tutors for decoding phonological awareness and spelling and uh, reading fluency, et cetera. So uh, that's where I will wrap up. This is the broad overview, but I think I would just reiterate that our goal is to build those strong foundations on, upon which our students are going to uh, continue to do some future learning and skill building. And with that, I'm going to hand it back to Glenn's, who's going to speak a little bit more about our speech and language. Yeah, thank you, Aram. Um, before I introduce to you Portia Pierre Mike, who is our tutoring department head, and Aram's direct um, co-department head in the in the language domain, I do want to mention to you that we do, in fact, have a speech and language pathologist at the lower school. Her name is Jen Kurzrock, and she could not be here tonight. Um, but I want to let you know that she, um, a little bit about what her role is in, in the lower school. So as you just heard from Aram, we have a very robust language program, as which makes sense since our learners are, gener are all uh, in need of a robust language program. Um, and Jen really supports that program. So we have, we have do a lot of um, our curriculum itself and instruction really does meet the needs of uh, language needs of most of our students. However, there are some students who also need additional support, direct support in the speech and language domains. And Jen is a great resource to us because she, um, can serve two roles. She can do some direct supports where she's pushing into classes and working alongside teachers to try to identify and support some of the specific language needs that they have that are beyond our curriculum. And, and she's also able to act as a consultant to um, students who might see an outside provider where Jen will be in contact with that person and will um, share information so that we make sure that we are supporting that student in very consistent ways from uh, school into the clinical setting. So Jen can, um, she's, she's a great resource for us. I think many of you have probably her, she's reached out to many people. If you um, have any questions specifically about speech and language supports, I encourage you to email her or call her. She's, um, she's great to talk to and just brainstorm um, any kind of concerns you may have. So that is just a little plug for our speech and language support. Um, and now we're going to move over to the tutoring department and Portia Piermike, who's going to explain to you what happens during your, your child's tutoring time each day. Portia? Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Glenn. Again, my name is Portia Piermike, and I am the lower school tutoring department head. Since the start of the school year, your child's tutor has begun the process of learning about your child and connecting with members of their learning team. 
Over the past two weeks in tutorial, your child's tutor has been collecting, has working, has been working collectively and learning about your child on a through a holistic lens. As the process of discovering your child's strengths in areas of challenge, self-doubt, and uncertainty begins. The heart of an OG lesson is to provide diagnostic and prescriptive lessons. The goal is to have students understand the structure of the English language. OG concepts unfold the logic within the language. The beauty of a diagnostic and prescriptive lesson is that it meets each student directly on their path to a larger understanding in the areas of reading and spelling. Instruction is structured, sequential, and systematic, showing a predictable relationship between written letters and spoken sounds. So starting from simple to complex, tutors are also ensuring students can successfully identify all 26 letters and are assessing their sound to symbol correspondence, rhyming, and also the process of separating individual sounds. So if a student was given the word clock, tapping out the sounds k, u, a, k, and then also checking to see if your child can blend sounds together if given individual sounds k, u, a, k, and then responding by saying that those sounds make the word clock. So that is phonemic awareness, and phonemic awareness is the foundational skill needed in order to read and to spell. Concepts are taught through a multi-sensory approach as Aram referenced in language. It's also brought into the tutorial as well. So not going beyond what the student sees and hears, but also going into a tactile experience and also bringing in incorporating movement into their lesson and also ensuring that concepts are reinforced until mastery. That is the goal. The relationship between a tutor and their tutee is rooted in trust in order to do this tough work. Confidence is built from experience, success throughout sessions, and also constructive feedback is normalized. We're constantly giving your child feedback in real time and also letting them know when their responses may be incorrect to bring their aware to strengthen their awareness assessments so as aram mentioned we have curriculum based assessments that are done three times a year to assess your child's response to the og curriculum which is done within the tutorial in the coming weeks you will meet your child's tutor in your second conference and you will receive information about these curriculum based assessments and their tutors hopes and dreams. I will now pass it off to our math department head, Peter Morris. Thank you. Thank you, Portia. Hi, all. I am Peter Morris, and I'm the head of math in lower school. Uh, and despite the ample space dedicated to my image on this slide, uh, the slide will, in fact, be dedicated to giving you an overview of what math looks like for the BR2s. So math at the BR2 level is all about creating a solid foundation in number sense, number structure, and developing relational thinking to support your students' readiness to engage in math with understanding in the years ahead. And just as we do for their language skills, we meet students where they are for math as well. Students remain in their homeroom groups for math, which is socially, emotionally, and developmentally appropriate for kiddos at this age. Typically, there's a teaching assistant present for each math class, and this affords us more flexibility to give each child an appropriate level of challenge in math class. Another major goal is to foster students' views of themselves as young mathematicians and to provide opportunities for students to develop their math reasoning. In doing so, we place an emphasis on flexibility and deep thinking about problems ahead of putting the focus on speed and memorization, which for a lot of our kiddos is not in their wheelhouse. A common misperception is that math is simply about getting right answers and getting them quickly. I don't know about you, but that's how, you know, that was the impression that I got from math when I learned it as a kid. Um, instead at Carroll, we try and engage our students in math the way it's actually done by mathematicians. Uh, so that means in ways that involve visualization and exploration, creativity, and play. It's also important that our young mathematicians come to understand that 
the most interesting and important problems in math involve making mistakes and then making connections by making mistakes um, by thinking deeply over longer periods of time. So we want our students to not just be strong calculators, but strong thinkers and strong problem solvers as well. From a curriculum standpoint, we use illustrative mathematics as a guiding resource. It has many elements that we like, but even the best curriculum is better for our students with modifications, particularly at younger developmental levels, like the BR2s. We draw from multiple resources in designing learning experiences for your kids, and our teachers work very hard and are really very skilled at taking resource materials and either modifying them or completely rebuilding them from scratch where necessary to make tasks more accessible and engaging for our students. Therefore, you're gonna notice lots of teacher modified and teacher created materials when you see your child's work at conferences. So that's a quick summary of what math looks like at the BR level and actually what it looks like throughout a child's experience at Carroll is not much different. Um, but now we're gonna send it back to, to Glenn's and she's gonna show an introductory video which was produced by our Dynamic Multis team. Yeah, thanks, Peter. Thanks, everybody, for your, your overviews. Um, so our Multis are not live with us tonight, but they are certainly a lively group. So what they did was they made a little video to introduce themselves to all of you um, and uh, sort of give you a face to look at when your kids are talking about their music teacher or their art teacher or their rounders teacher, or the phys ed teacher. Um, what did I miss? Uh, and then Maylee, of course, teaches community building. So we'd like to, um, to play this little video for you and then Sue will um, finish us off with some Q&A, okay? All right, Aaron. Hello, everybody. My name is Patrick Pate. I am the lower school music teacher here at Carroll. It's my 12th year doing that. And it's my first year as the lower school Multis team leader. And for newer parents, Multis is a word at Carroll that means specialist. You know, PE, arts, and all the other subjects outside of the core academic subjects. Um, in music class this year, the most exciting thing is we're back in the classroom. Last year, we were either meeting online or outside, which is very challenging uh, for instruments like guitar and ukulele. So we're back in the music classroom, which means all the students get to experience the percussion instruments I have from all over the world. Those are great springboards into discussions about culture and identity. We um, also focus a lot on recorder in fourth grade, and our instrument of the year in fifth grade is ukulele. But all students uh, experience movement, singing, and instrument playing as part of the core curriculum in music. Um, I'm very excited to have all of you get to know a little bit about our other Maltese teachers. So let's continue this presentation. Thanks, guys. Look forward to being your kid's music teacher. My name is Miss Sifter. You will find me here in the art room. Um, here we are building skills for self-expression. We also are exercising our fine motor skills uh, with all sorts of different materials, uh, including clay. Every year people get a good healthy clay unit. Um, there are opportunities for problem solving every time kids step into the art room. We research for our projects. We do pre-planning. We do building. We do revising. We do rebuilding. Um, and it's a great opportunity. And those, those steps mimic writing, don't they? Wow. Also, we explore our world uh, through looking at art. And that helps us to begin to uh, develop an understanding for context of who we are and where we are in time and history and place on this world and how are the many ways that I could possibly decide to express myself. That's what we're here doing in art and we're having a good time. 
Take care. Hey everybody, Coach Hendrick here uh, on our beautiful turf field. Really excited to have your kids again this year. Welcome to those that are uh, new to Carroll. Welcome back to those returning. Really excited about playing outside, inside. We have more options this year. I want to introduce Coach B to you. Coach. Hi, everybody. Uh, Coach B here. I'll be helping out Coach pretty much on our turf in our, uh, in our gym with PE. You'll also see me pretty much anywhere anywhere else in the school. I might be with Mr. Payne one day, Miss Sifter the next. So I look forward to seeing you and all the lessons we got planned. I'm Mr. Gregory. I teach Bounders here at the lower school. Uh, our Bounders program is based off of the Outward Bound program brought to us by a former teacher uh, back in the beginning at Carroll School. Bounders has been a staple and has been around almost as long as Horton Gillingham. Here, we bring out the confidence in your child. We find their strengths. We encourage them to go past their edges and to be a little uncomfortable. We challenge them to work in groups and to explore the natural world. In Bounders, students can learn everything from camping skills that can involve setting up a tent, starting a fire, how to safely handle a knife and create something usable with it. Students will also get the experience of taking a risk. It might be having other classmates keep them safe when they're off the ground riding a giant A-frame or maybe spotting each other when they're up on a slack line. Students will also have the opportunity to have a little time by themselves, connecting with nature and observing their own curiosities. Founders, I like to tell the students, is a break from the academics, but I teach them through play and they never see it coming. Hello, I'm Eric Jacobson, and I teach Makers. And I'm Jamie Fisher, also teaching Makers. I am super excited to get to do some 3D design and some very cool 3D printing. I agree, Eric. And I think the thing that I'm probably most looking forward to this year is seeing kids really learn how to code using both Scratch and Spiros. It should be a really fun year. Hi, my name is Kelly Sampar, and I am primarily the fifth grade science teacher at the lower school. I also teach a fourth grade class, um, and I'm an OG tutor. Um, this year, I'm really pumped about partnering with Grassroots Wildlife Conservation to help head start um, some adorable but threatened um, Blandine's turtles. Um, so we work with them to gather growth data so the kids use food scales and calipers just like real scientists do to gather information and data about the growth rates of these little hatchlings that we spend the year um, feeding and taking care of so that when we return them to um, their homes at Concord's Great Meadows in the spring, they are bigger and stronger and they have a better chance at survival. So in fifth grade this year, pumped because these adorable little guys have a better chance because of our fifth graders. Um, so they're really helping our local ecosystem, which honestly, can't ask for anything better than that. So we're excited. Thank you. Bye. How's it going? My name is Kira McCubrey. This is my seventh year at the Carroll School, but my first year working as a science teacher for the first through fourth grades. Uh, science has always been something that I've been super interested in. So I'm just excited to be teaching something that I'm really, really passionate about. Uh, I'm looking forward to this upcoming year. Okay, so I think we're going to pass this back to Sue and um, answer some questions. So Sue, 
Thanks, everybody. Um, I hope um, you were able to get a lot of information. I know that we um, filled your brains uh, with all of the planning that we've been doing for your um, for your children. I'm not noticing any questions in the chat at the moment. Are there any things, if anybody does have a question, feel free to go ahead and put it in the chat and I'd be more than happy to see what we can do to get more clarification. Um, I'll give um, you just a few minutes to see whether anybody does have any questions. And you also know that you know where to find us. Um, at any time you have a question, you just reach out to any of us and we'd be happy to, to answer um, anything that might be on your mind um, or help you to problem solve or whatever ever it might be. One thing I want to be sure of, many of you, if not the high majority of you are brand new to Carol. And it's really important for me uh, to convey to you that we're here to partner with you um, as you really begin your Carol journey. And we're here to help you to um, help figure things out. Um, a real message I want to convey is that I don't want you to sit in um, confusion or sit in a sense of frustration in any form or fashion. So please don't do that. Please, please let, reach out so that we can um, clarify, answer questions, problem solve with you, and really partner with you as your children um, move along the grades at Carroll. So I don't see any other any questions, and I I'm sure you've got children to go to and maybe even some dinner to have of your own. <laughs> so we're going to let you do that. And uh, thank you so much for joining us tonight. And um, we will see you very soon. Thank you.